Uh, the title of this message that God has placed on my heart this morning is called Amazing Things. Amazing Things. And if you've got a Bible today, we're going to be in Joshua, the book of Joshua in the Old Testament. Joshua chapter 3. We're going to read verse 1 to 5 together. And uh, we're going to be reading, well, I'm going to be reading from the NIV translation of the Bible. I've mixed it up this week, but uh, NIV. And it says this in Joshua chapter 3, verse 1 to 5. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out from Shittim and went to the Jordan, where they camped before crossing over. After three days, the officers went throughout the camp, giving orders to the people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the Levitical priests carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Then you will know which way to go, since you have never been this way before. But keep a distance of about 2,000 cubits, cubits between you and the ark. Do not go near it. Joshua told the people, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Have you ever had an all-in moment or moments within your life? A moment where you've decided to go all-in and all-in for God. I was reminded of one of my all-in moments this week. On Tuesday this week, before the afternoon prayer meeting, uh, during lunchtime, I decided to take my dog Charlie out for a walk. We've uh, had some pretty bad weather over the last couple of months, and I haven't had an opportunity to take her over to the country park, the Day Valley Country Park up in Cumbe. That's where our favorite place to go for a walk. But I had a little bit of time just before the prayer meeting this week, so I decided me and Charlie were going to go over to the country park, and she was excited. She loved it. You know, her favorite thing to do out on a walk is to chase stones. She loves for me to pick up stones and she loves to chase stones. And, and we went for a walk. We went up to the lake, which is where we usually go. But then I decided that we would go a little bit further, that we would follow the path along the river, that we'd go past the top lake. And, and as we were coming out past the, the top lake, you come out to this part here up in the Bulfa, which is where the old colliery used to be. And there is a reminder of that colliery, which is this wheel here, this mining wheel here, which would have been the lifts down to the uh, mining shafts. That's where it's a reminder of that. And uh, I was reminded, as I said, of an all-in moment because I was, sit I was up there this week and I was feeding Charlie. We decided to have a bit of a breather because I've become a little bit unfit again. And uh, we had a bit of a breather and I gave her some treats at the top. And as I was just up there looking at the Darren Mountain here, as you can see behind me, I was reminded of one of my all in moments, which happened just a few years ago. In fact, it was five years ago, just a few weeks away, if, if in a few weeks time. It was on February the 19th. It was during half term. At that time, I was working in the local primary school up in Town Church Primary School, and I loved it there. Absolutely loved my time there. And uh, I was serving as pastor here. I was part-time, bivocational, up in the school and working here. But I was loving my time in the school. The children were brilliant. The staff were brilliant. I thoroughly enjoyed my time there. But as I went on this walk up to the country park in half term in 2019, I was listening to my Bible readings for the day. And I came to Deuteronomy chapter 31. And as I was listening to this passage of scripture, I got up to this point. And as I got up to this point, there was a verse that God spoke to me through as I was listening in my headphones in Deuteronomy chapter 31. And I felt in that moment, it was as if I could hear, it was as if the heavens parted and I heard God's voice audibly. The Holy Spirit spoke to me as I was reading that passage of scripture, listening to it. And I felt God say to me, to go full-time into ministry as pastor of this church. As I said, I was bivocational, but I felt God had called me to go full-time, to leave the school and to go full-time here. Now, I've got to be honest, I was a little bit afraid to do this. I was afraid for a few reasons, because our current pastor at the time, Pastor Rob, he always encouraged me to do bivocational ministry so that I could be a witness to the world around me, so I could share Jesus with people in my workplace. He'd always encouraged that. He was for that. But I was also a little bit afraid because I heard about other stories from other pastors that I've met about how churches would treat full-time pastors and uh, treat their families. I'd heard about, also I'd heard some bad stories. I'd heard about the personal battles and struggles that the pastor had spiritually as well, about the challenges 
and difficulties. And I've been part of church all my life. So I've heard about that side of things. And so I was a little bit afraid. But I heard in that moment God saying, trust me in this and go full time in ministry. Now I had a choice in that moment. I knew what could lie ahead of me. I knew the things that was coming ahead if I obeyed the call of God in this moment. I had a choice. Was I going to go all in for God or was I going to ignore the call of God and carry on doing what I was doing? Well, as I was up on this turnings, up here, up this, by this mining circle here, up in the country park, I just heard God's call and I just responded to God's call and I said, Lord, you've gone all in for me. You give your all for me. You love me. You created me. You know the plan you have for my life. And so I decided in that moment, God, I'm going to obey you and I'm going to go all in for you. And I remember, I don't want to be dramatic, but I remember getting up by that turning circle. There was nobody around. I got on my knees and I said, Lord, I surrender myself to you. I give myself to you and this call. And I pray that you will lead me, guide me, protect me, give me all that I need. Just Lord, I give my all to you. And would you just lead me in this decision? Now, I'd love to say that since responding to that call from 2019, that it's been a breeze. I'd love to say that, but there have been challenges. I felt the enemy come against me personally. I've seen that. I've gone through challenges, heartbreak, hurts. I've experienced that with different things. Challenges come my way. But I can honestly say the blessings have outweighed all those challenges. God has been so good. God has been so faithful. God is continuing to be good. God has come through for me time and time again. God has worked in my life, brought me through things, made me stronger, helped me in different ways. And it all came, as I said, yes, Lord, I'll go all in for you. God has done amazing things in my life. And I found that consecration or surrender always brings amazing things. Surrender always brings amazing things. And we see this in Joshua chapter three. Now, Joshua chapter three, we see the people of God, they've been in slavery in Egypt for 400 years, but God had rescued them. God had raised up a leader called Moses and God had led his people out of captivity and God had saved them. God had performed miracles, bringing them through the Red Sea. God had been faithful to them when they had been faithless, even in the wilderness. God had been faithful to them, providing food for them, being with them. But now we see, a few years on from this, that God's people, 40 years on, God's people were about to enter into this land that God had promised for his people. It was the promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey. It was a new homeland for the people of God. The old generation who had disobeyed God had passed away. And a new generation had raised up and God had raised up a new leader. It was the assistant of Moses. His name was Joshua. And Joshua's call from God was to lead the people of God into this new land, into this homeland, into the land of Canaan. And what stood between the people of God and the new homeland was the river Jordan. You might have heard of the River Jordan, but this separated the people. There was over a million people and they had come now to the east bank of the Jordan River. And the Bible says that they were waiting on this east bank of the Jordan River. They had decided to set up camp over a million people, men, women, children, all ages, livestock. They were ready. They'd upped their lives from Egypt and now they were ready to settle into the land that God had promised Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac. This promised land, this wonderful land. So they were about to enter into this promised land and they were on the banks of the river. Now, they've been there three days and and then Joshua goes amongst the camp and he tells the leaders, he tells the priests, he gives them some instructions ready for the people to move into the promised land. These are the instructions about what the people were to do to get ready to move. It says there in verse 1 to 4, Joshua 3, I'll read it again. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out from Shittim and went to the Jordan where they camped before crossing. After three days, the officers went throughout the camp, giving orders to the people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the Levitical priest carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Then you will know which way to go since you have never been this way before. But keep a distance of about 2,000 cubits between you and the Ark. Do not go near it. These instructions seem pretty straightforward, don't they? 
that God's priests, the priests, the Levitical priests, they were to carry the Ark of the Covenant, which is where God's presence dwelt in the Old Testament. These priests were to carry this Ark, this box. They were to carry this. And then Joshua said that when you see the priests carrying the Ark, then all the people are to get up and follow. That they are to stay a certain distance behind this ark because the presence of God, because of the holiness of God, they were to stay a certain distance away from this ark. But when they see this ark moving, they are simply to follow it. Those instructions are a walk in the park, aren't they? When you see the priest carrying a box, just follow it. Just follow this box. But then Joshua doesn't end there. Joshua then gives this instruction. God lays this instruction on Joshua's heart. Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves. Consecrate yourselves. Now, you might say this morning, what does that mean? What does consecrate mean? Well, the word consecrate, Bible scholars say and Bible commentaries say that the word consecrate means to be set apart or to set something apart. It means that it's something is to be designated for a special purpose. Something's to be set aside for a special purpose. To be consecrated to God means to be completely dedicated to God, to go all in for God, to give everything to God. As we heard around the communion table this morning, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind and your strength. That's what consecration is. It's saying, God, I'm giving you my all. I'm going to be set apart. I'm not going to live for myself but I'm going to be set apart for you. I'm giving my all to you, God. Consecration is complete surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. That's what consecration is. It's giving our all to Jesus. We relinquish everything. Our time, our talents, our treasure. We give it all to God. God has Lordship and control over all things. Consecration is basically death to self. That's what consecration is. It's death to self and living for God. And you know this morning that God set the standard for us. Jesus set the standard. Jesus gave his all for you and me. You remember that famous passage in in the Gospels where just before Jesus was about to be crucified, he was in the Garden of Gethsemane and he was wrestling. He didn't want to go to the cross. He knew what lay before him. He knew his death was coming. But he says and he prays in the Garden of Gethsemane, Father, not my will, but your will be done. Jesus gave his all because of you and me. Even though he knew his death was coming, he knew what it would accomplish. He knew that it would mean reconciliation between us and him. God united with man once again. Jesus gave his all. But did you know, Jesus expects nothing less in return. He expects our all as well. He demands our lives. My life, my all, as that hymn says, God, I give you it all. But you know, this morning when we give our all to God, our all to God, The exchange rate is unbelievable. When we give ourselves to God and everything to God, God gives everything to us. He transfers our sin, our failures, our mistakes. He took all of that on the cross and he exchanged it for his life, his love. He's exchanged it for an eternity with him. He's put on us his righteousness and we are made right with God and reconciled to God. God cancels our debt. He wipes the slate clean. He writes us into his will. And he says, all is even. You are accepted. How amazing is that? That when we give our all to God, he gives his all to us. How incredible is that? Those wonderful blessings, salvation, grace, mercy, hope, life. God has given himself and all to us. However, I know that this call to give everything that we have to God is frightening, isn't it? It's frightening to say, okay, God, I give you my life. What if God said to you this morning, give up your job and follow me? What if God says to you this morning, end this relationship and trust me with your life? What if God said to you this morning that I might not perform that miracle that you're looking for in your life, but trust me because I'm going to work everything out for your good, for your glory. Giving ourselves to God, giving our all to God is frightening. 
And I'm sure when Joshua delivered this message to the people of Israel about giving their all, consecrating themselves, I'm sure the people thought, I'm scared. We've given up enough already, but now God wants our hearts. He wants everything. He wants us to trust in Him. I'm sure they were afraid to give their all to God. And I'm sure they were afraid because they wondered, what will happen when I give Him my all? Will God come through for me? Will it be worth it giving my all to God? And I know this morning from personal experience, I've asked those questions. I've had those doubts and fears. God, if I give myself to you, what will, what will happen? What will happen in my life if I truly trust you with everything in my life? You know, there's that fear that if we give ourselves fully to God, then there'll be less for us, isn't it? There's that fear that if I give myself to God, God won't come through for me. That I won't have a life, that my life will be boring, but and my life will be empty. I'll be at a loss. But that's simply not true. In fact, it's the opposite. I love what it goes on to say, what Joshua goes on to say there in Joshua 3 verse 5. Joshua told the, told the people, consecrate yourselves. Why? For tomorrow, the Lord will do amazing things amongst you, among you. He'll do amazing things among you. And do you know, because the people of God, because the Israelites obeyed God, God delivered on his promise. Because they gave themselves to God and trusted God completely, God came through on his word. If you read a little bit later in Joshua 3, we see that God parted the river Jordan just like he did with the Red Sea. He parted the river at the most dangerous time of year. At flood season, God parted this river and the Israelites walked safely through into the promised land. They crossed the, the water. Over a million people safely traveled through the other side. God performed a miracle in the midst. They seen the wonder, the spectacle, the awe of God at work within their lives. I know the same is true for you and me. If we obey the Lord and give ourselves wholeheartedly to Him, God will give Himself to us. He'll give Himself to us. When we die to ourselves, we are made alive to God. True life, real life. As Jesus promised, he said, I have come so that you might have life and life more abundantly. Not an average life, not a boring life, life more abundantly. A life that knows the will of God, that knows the love of God, that knows the purpose of God. That's what Jesus says here. And the more that we give to God, I found in my life, the more that I have, and the more I become as well, the more I know God within my life. Jesus said these powerful words in Matthew 16, 25. He said, for whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. Anybody want to find real life, true life? It's through giving your life to Jesus, surrendering your life to him in all things, with your work, with your finances, with your relationships, with your spiritual life, with your eternity. It's given your all to Him. And when you surrender and lay down your life to Him, He'll give you His life. God promises that when we give our all to Him, He will do amazing things. And so as we come to a conclusion of our service today, you know, tomorrow we're going to be consecrating ourselves as a church family. I'm going to be doing it and I pray you will join me because tomorrow we start in a week of prayer and fasting. We are beginning a week of prayer and fasting as a church family. And you know, I really believe within, with all of my heart, I really believe God's gonna do amazing things amongst us. I just have that expectancy. I feel like this, the, the Holy Spirit is stirring my heart and I'm believing that God's gonna do amazing things. He already is doing amazing things, but I believe that what we're gonna see in the days to come will totally outweigh what we're experiencing at this moment in time. I'm believing that God's going to do amazing things in your life and in the life of this church. I wholeheartedly believe that. I'm believing this week as we pray and fast, I'm believing for God's promises to come to pass, that we are going to continue to see this church grow and become a church of a thousand people. I'm believing this week for household salvation. Anybody want to see their loved ones come to know Jesus? God's going to do amazing things, and I'm believing for that. I'm believing for backsliders to return. Those who once knew the Lord, I'm believing they will come to know the Lord. You know, I have a real expectancy. I believe God's stirring it on my heart 
Then we're going to see signs, wonders, and miracles. Because God is going to heal. God's going to deliver. God's going to restore. I believe God's going to do that in our midst. And I'm believing this week that as we pray and seek the Lord, as God does amazing things, I'm believing that he's going to set hearts ablaze for him. I'm believing for people to have a fresh love and a passion for Jesus. I'm believing for disciples to be made this week. But I want to encourage us as we come to an end. We need to remember as we're excited for God to do amazing things, we need to remember that miracles are God's job. Our job is consecration. Our job is giving ourselves to him. This is where we are starting. It starts with you and it starts with me. Surrendering our lives afresh to Jesus. Maybe for the first time or re-surrendering our lives to him. Consecration is all about letting God do for us what we can't do for ourselves. And that way, he gets all the glory. He gets all the praise. I can assure you that if we consecrate ourselves to God, God will do amazing things within our lives. God will do incredible things. It's inevitable. And I just want to end with this, this quote. This quote's really challenged me. I wrote this down in one of my prayer journals. It's something that's really stuck with me. And it's by a famous preacher. You might have heard of him, D.L. Moody. He's from Chicago in America. He did incredible things. And, and he once said this. He said, the world has yet to see what God will do with and for and through and in by the person who is fully and wholly consecrated to him. This world is waiting to see. This world needs Jesus. Your home needs Jesus. Abraham needs Jesus. Our families need Jesus. And I believe Jesus wants to use us by his spirit. But he's looking for available people. He's not looking for a people who have got Bible college degrees. He's not looking for a people who can quote the Bible inside out. He's just looking for a people who will love him with all their hearts and say, Lord, here I am, wholly available to you. I, use, I surrender myself to you. I watch how God will work in your life. Why can't God use you? Why can't God use me? Why can't God use Gateway Church, Abraham, and to bring about a revival in our land that this nation hasn't seen before? Why can't God use us? All God is looking for is available people, consecrated people. And so I want to end just by reading that passage. Joshua 3, verse 5. As we come to this week of prayer and fasting, consecrate yourselves. Why? For tomorrow, the Lord will do amazing things among you. Amazing things are on their way. Let's give ourselves to the Lord. Amen.